Oh boy. I'm afraid now. Now I'm afraid. Oh, I'm afraid. Now I feel trapped. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to the point where we're going to be talking about Trap, a movie directed by M. Night Shalamala Ding Dang, or whatever the hell his name is. That isn't his right name. It's not his right name, but nobody ever pronounces it right. M. Night Shalamala. The, the destroyer of words, ladies and gentlemen. He actually said it right. I know, I know. I know. That's what I'm song. saying. The destroyer of words said it. <laughs> the paying of attentions. Yes. So he wrote it. He directed it. He made us think that there's going to be some super crazy twist. And yet here we are with no crazy. So the twist was that there was no twist. Uh, yeah, I think the I yeah, think so pretty much. Pretty well, much. Uh, well, when we dive into it, I'll, I'll point out what was potentially the you know twist. what. Go, yeah. go. Listen, all I'm going to say is I agree. I sorry, yeah. I disagree with what Pancake said in his short because mm-hmm. he said the first half of the movie was no good and the second half was good. I will say that the first two thirds of the movie, the first two, the <laughs> first three, no, the first two acts, to me had me glued to my seat, rooting for this guy to get away with it. Mm-hmm. The last act, the third act, uh, I'm going to be honest and tell you, I wasn't a fan. So some background on the production, like it had a cool concept, like the inspiration, um, like back in the day, I think it was the 80s, uh, the feds did an operation. Uh, this is pre-internet, so they they couldn't pull something like off in the modern day. Yeah. So exactly. they sent, so to get capture criminals with that were wanted open warrants they sent them f- free uh uh fake message or ads that they got free tickets to the super bowl and they all show up to this one convention center uh-huh. and feds describe uh disguise you know as these officials to get the tickets i think they busted a couple hundred so he drew inspiration from this but you know put his own spin on it and make it a serial killer instead yeah uh-huh. well um looking at this movie uh, even from looking at the trailer at first, I saw this, and it's one of those trailers that kind of gives away the entire plot in the trailer in and of itself. And some movies, I'm like, all right, they'll be all right. I'm still curious. This one, I looked at this, and I said, oh, I don't know why, but Shyamalan may have actually gotten me this time, and I really want to know how this is going to end. How is this going to work out? How is he going to get away? Or how are they going to catch him? I need to know these questions. So what we got was bumbling dad, (laughs) bumbling dad, uh, (laughs) taking his daughter to see a concert and they managed to get like really good seats. They got floor seats to this. And I'm like, dang, all right, that's, that's, that's amazing. Also, if, Nothing bad happened to this. Like, let's say hypothetically, like we got like a decent twist and Josh Hartnett wasn't actually the killer in this. Uh, this girl's entire like dream would have been come true. Like th- this would have yeah. been the greatest thing. Uh, literally like floor seats, uh, going to like backstage, getting all this uh, free merch, pissing off the former uh, best friend and everything. It, it was kind of great. It was awesome uh, in that sense. But having said that, though, now when we actually get to the meat and potatoes, And we see in the trailer that like, oh, he's actually a killer. My God, how's he going to get away with this? And when you finally do see the quote unquote twist, there is no twist. We we thought that like, you know, oh, we're sitting there in the theater, the three of us. We came up with better twists <laughs> in five minutes <laughs> the twist. than Shyamalan did. And I'm like, man, like, cause I sat in the middle. I'm like, Spade, what do you think the twist is going to be? Oh, I think it's going to be this. I'm like, all right, I can see that happening. I think it's going to be this. Uh, pancakes, what do you think? Actually, I think it's going to be like this. I'm like, I man, think they came up with. The- I really wanted the daughter to be the twist. Yeah. But no. Or, yeah. The, or the singer was part of the killings, too. Yeah. <laughs> so since you brought up the singer, here's mm-hmm. the thing. Um. Her name, her name in the movie is Lady, Lady Rain, 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 right? Yeah, she's so, like a she's like a Taylor Swift type character, yeah, like they, a Taylor Swift slash Lady, a huge, a huge pop star right. in, in yeah, that world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so played by none other than Salika Shyamalan. Yep. So his real life daughter, his yep. real life daughter. 
So when you really think about it, mm-hmm. this whole movie is for her. Yeah. All the songs in that movie, the soundtrack was all her music. She wrote ever sang everything, wrote yeah, everything. She wrote and sang everything. Uh she's to be honest, not a great actress because her, her scenes were meh. I was at gonna that say, point. wasn't this like one of her first like films? Yes. It was her first film. It's yeah. her first film, and she was. Oh, then, yeah, th- uh, I think that's what the twist was. The twist was that somehow <laughs> the singer is the one that helps the FBI catch him. I yeah no I okay because nobody's gonna see that. Honest to God, the actual twist twist that was meant to be here is the fact that the wife inadvertently helped catch him because she thought for whatever reason, because I actually like, I listened to what she was like trying to say and I'm looking at her. I'm like, this bitch is crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. Like she got all this involved for the wrong reasons about him cheating. And it's like, Oh, he's going out. He's doing this late nights and everything, whatever. Some of it made sense, but some of it was also just like, where are you going with this? And then it's like, oh, it happened to turn out that you're a serial killer. And I'm like, <laughs> so I wish, what do you do? I wish they could have done like flashback sequences, like show him, you know, on the prowl. Or for second, showing her. Showing, showing her, 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 her stalking yeah, her husband. Yes. yes. Like see him in his safe house. See, you know, it's fine. Plant the ticket. P- plant the receipt. The, the thing that they I ran out of was, budget. The thing I thought was like kind of dumb was like we saw from like his perspective like an older woman like sitting in the background that was not the uh fbi agent that was haunting him it was a separate woman who was just like in the background a little bit in the foreground just there and she's going like another second and it was poorly explained uh towards the end of the movie yes. and I'm like we needed to see more of that i need if that's the case i need to see this woman in every frame of where he's looking from his pov that would have made it so much better I, well that was the fbi uh profile no, 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 no the other lady like, just uh, she I, was pretending I, to be her mother no, 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 i mean his no, mother no, no pancakes that was he was seeing his mother okay. he was seeing his mother and all that that's what i'm trying to say i it would have been great to see things from his perspective and in every time like we saw him from that perspective we just saw like his yeah. mother and like certain things. Speaking of seeing things from his perspective, going back to the first hour, what was up with you know now now thinking about it since we've seen the movie, we're seeing it from his point of view. Mm-hmm. However, what was up with that cringe forced dialogue? You know, how he, like you know when he was talking to the guy, he's like, "Oh, how you doing? My name is so and so." You know, well, he, was, he was he was doing him. a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. He was him, doing brother. a bit. Sociopath is trying to blend in with like, society. Yeah. I will say this. The best thing yeah. was the post credit scene. Yeah. Because yes. that was hysterical. That's Whoever that guy is, I, I don't know his name. To I don't be know. completely honest, if I would have been in that guy's same shoes, I, I would have thought. I would, uh, no, I would have thought for a second. I'm like, I'm going to jail for <laughs> accessory. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Uh, he, he, I let this man go. And also, like, oh, my God. Like, okay, so you see... The police are having a uh, a meeting backstage. Like, don't let this guy get away. And you mm-hmm. see the random guy in the background not wearing anything that looks like he works there. He's like, yeah. oh, I'm just here to check the coffee. Yes. And, then, and then he's on the roof to get air, quote unquote. He had the pass. He, he had the pass. He had the, it was, it wasn't showing. And then you see the two officers on the ceiling. It's like, it's it's like they took the same officers from the got the police department in Dark Knight Rises oh, and they no. put him in one place instead of on the ground they put him in this arena yes. and he still found a way to escape. But my Man. look, I enjoyed this second hour because that's where the movie picked up and we got all the background blah 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 like intensity. I know we disagree on that, but yeah, that's fine. But they could have cut less being at the concert and the forced dialogue and the cringiness. We know how good of a job actor josh hartnett is it's just he it was just disappointing like he was acting that way to be uh, that sociopath that's why i looked at this and i'm like i i would see a sequel about this movie i really would because i enjoyed josh hartnett's character in this i kind of loved him even like him breaking down i loved every bit of it he wasn't as uh, "quote unquote" smart as like other serial killers that we've all uh, seen. He was like, slick. Other, uh, he was really slick. Uh, social media, but uh, not social media in other forms of media. But he was kind of slick. But he was good at the uh, 
excuse me, uh, the bumbling dad uh, kind of role in that sense. And he played it to a T, but there were certain points where I'm like, too you, much. You could have, yeah, a little too much of this. And there were also like certain points that like, if you would have toned down a little bit or like if you would have like as opposed to going left, you went right. I felt like that would have been a better direction of what you did uh, plot wise. Um, at, at this point, guys, I, what did you think that the twist was going to be? I told you, I really mm -hmm. thought that the twist was going to be either the daughter mm -hmm. or the singer being the actual killer. Yep. And then towards towards the end of the movie, mm -hmm. I was really thinking that uh -huh. maybe it's the wife. Yep. Maybe he's trying to save his wife. Yep. Or there was a second killer helping him. So that's right. what I thought it was going to be. No, I, I thought, honest to God, that like the big twist was that, yes, he was the killer, but they were all hunting another guy fitting the exact same profile that he did. Because I also noticed throughout this entire film, they didn't have any like artist renderings or any pictures of this guy or who they think they might be. They literally said, what we're looking for is a tall white guy with brown <laughs> hair. And I'm like, Oh no, he had a tattoo on his wrist. I'm sorry. He had a very small bunny tattoo on his wrist. I looked at spade and I'm like, Man, I feel like I'm being profiled. So, <laughs> dog. I wish they showed more of the British lady who was uh, that was the FBI profiler. Like it was like a Jeez. chess. She was like, so we could have seen more of the chess game between killer and profiler. I know it's been done before, but yeah, but it's been done better before. Like seeing these two go at it, like. Others, I'm like, all right, it's a chess game. This, I feel like it was checkers. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not the level of of what we got in Hannibal Lecter and Jodie Foster. Jodie no. Foster's. Uh, I'm sorry, because I'm uh, downing checkers for a hot second. I apologize. Uh, what I meant to be uh, saying is that this would have been a game of tic tac toe. <laughs> That's honestly it. That's honestly what I feel in this, and like it, it wasn't enough. We needed more. I felt. Yeah, I agree. The semi good thing about this movie was mm -hmm. that it cost anywhere between 35 to 40 million dollars. So, oh, okay. And it, relatively cheap. Right, relatively cheap. And according to Box Office Mojo, yep. as of today, yep. worldwide, yep. it's made yep. dun 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 20 million dollars. So it's a flop so far. Well, Ooh. it's only been in theaters for a week. A no, weekend. what? A oh, weekend, exactly. Weekend. It's, yeah. it's uh, we're on the fourth day today. Yeah. So in four days to make twenty million, let's just say for argument's sakes, by next week on Monday, I don't think this thing is going to make more than forty million dollars. I was about to say, well, I, I used to always say, like back then when we had arguments like this, if you make one dollar over your budget, it's considered a hit. If you make one dollar less, yeah. just put two in the back of your head and make sure no one finds your body. <laughs> um, That's it. Yeah. No, nah, but I, but honestly, you did bring like a lot more things to light and everything in the sense of like, yeah, like we have like this budget, but it's not the overall budget that they usually put out there. It's like you know, okay, there's also like cost to x y and z too yeah. and it's like oh so it's actually more you need to make more right, right. than so, like a dollar over so for, for argument's sakes if the budget was 40 million dollars yeah i want to say because this is a small time a small time movie mm -hmm. it probably had a budget of maybe 10 to 20 million yeah tops maybe and because of that that brings it up from 40 to 55 50, yeah. 55, 60 million dollars. Yeah. If this movie makes about 40 mm -hmm. for the whole time it's in the theaters, I wouldn't say it's a bust, but at the same time, though, Shyamalan is losing his touch because he's not making it's, the studio's money. Yeah. You know, these are just losses that are coming up to the studio. So getting back to what I was mentioning with the premise. So yeah. the operation was called Operation Flagship from a 1985 sting operation, oh. which law enforcement arrested 101 wanted fugitives at a convention center pretending these guys, these guys showing up thinking they won two of all tickets and the pitch uh, from the director, he said it's Silence of the Lambs at a Taylor Swift concert. That's was part of his pitch. Oh, Jesus Christ. So the Lamps? question goes out to you guys. What do you guys think? Did you see the movie? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you think that Shyamalan should not make movies anymore? Maybe take like an extended vacation for 10 years? Think about more things and come back with a better story. Let us know in the comment section down below. Silence of the Lambs and Taylor Swift. What the <laughs> actual fuck? <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, um, we're leaving that yes, in. You <laughs> better leave that in. 